Welcome back to another Learning Layer segment. On this segment, we are continuing our conversation with Joe Kerrigan as he gets ready for his CISSP exam. So, Joe, yep. here we are. You, in the last time that we talked, you actually did some studying. Enough I did, talking. Yeah. You, you actually dove, used, used the system. Nice. You used the, the system. learning management system. So, um, or all the cool kids call it the LMS. LMS, right. So, <laughs> as if there's not enough acronyms, you know, yeah. in, in CISSP. That's what we need, more TLAs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, how did it go? What did you do? How, how, how are you feeling after having a domain under your belt? Pretty good. Okay. Pretty good. So, we started with, do, I started with domain one uh, because I wanted to do them in order. Now, in the diagnostic, I said I got a 70 on the test. So, I actually, I actually didn't do the reading. Okay. Um, because it's a lot of pages of reading for the first domain. I just started with the, uh, with the short videos. And in the short videos, while watching the short videos, on one side, uh, I would have them on one monitor, and off to the side, I would have another monitor with a Google Doc. Nice. Uh, I have a, in my Google Drive, I have a folder that's just CISSP notes, and I created a document called Domain One uh, Security and Risk Management, and I just started taking notes in that document. So I would have a, a big header that would talk, that was talking about that specific topic and then have regular sized headers underneath for each video. And then I would bold important points inside of the, um, inside of the text as I'm taking the notes. So for those of you who are sort of listening and following along at home, I think the big takeaway that Joe's doing well is sort of engaging with the material as you're watching it. So you right. don't want to watch this video library like you're watching Netflix or you don't want to read the textbook like you're reading a Harry Potter novel. No, I don't you think that's to, a good idea. Right. Or right. else it's just going to pass over you. It's like osmosis, in right. and out. You have to actively engage with the material. Right. So, Joe, after you did the material, you, you sat through it, you took notes, you digested it, reworded right. it, did you read quiz or retest yourself on that material? And if so, how'd you do? I did. I watched, first I watched the over, the big lecture. Okay. I, I set some time aside from that. I printed out the uh, notes that, that come along with it. The lesson book? The lesson yes. book. Yes. That's what it's called. <laughs> look, I, look, look, there's no, there's no official word for it. Whatever works <laughs> right. for you. <laughs> I know what you're talking about though. And I took some notes on that. Okay. And then I, then after finishing that, I took the, uh, I took the quiz or, you know, the end of the unit quiz and I got an 85%. Great. That's which good. is an improvement from 70%. Sure. Which I would consider to be acceptable. I would consider 85 to be good enough to consider the material learned. Sure. Or at least learned enough at the end of the uh, at the end of the classes or the the the, the lectures. And that's the key I want to hone in on because I think the timing matters, right? So you obviously sounds like you did the quiz in short order after going through material. The material is fresh in your brain, right? right? I did wait your... a little bit. I waited probably six hours between between the two. Great. It was on a Saturday. Yeah, there you go. So, so I think that that makes sense. It's a good score. It means you were able to follow all the material and, and, and retain some of it. But the key is, is to kind of keep spacing that time out when you take the quiz. So maybe day one, it's six hours. But then you can use the QBank and in 48 hours, you take another quiz on domain one to see if you can retain that information. And then you, as you're studying domain four, you also want to go back to domain one and take another quiz. Just again, make sure that information is staying fresh right. and you can actually move it to your long-term memory. So it's kind of like a continuous process. Well, I'll be doing that, yes. Because I, I, testing is also almost, is a pretty good learning experience as well. <laughs> With immediate feedback and you can go back and see where your weaknesses are and, and immediately, uh, you can learn the material that you missed. Right Absolutely. Away. Absolutely. And I think that's also a really good perspective to have on it. You were saying that I think you're a good test taker because you have that perspective. You have to have that same perspective in studying too, in the sense where you just said, think of it as a interesting data point about yourself. Mm -hmm. A wrong question is not a bad thing. A wrong question is learning about yourself and an opportunity to learn the material. Right. So get excited, try to get motivated, try to reframe it. Like, 
oh, I'm not frustrated I got it wrong. This is an opportunity for me to learn that I got it wrong and learn how to get it right the next time. So Joe, sounds like you have a pretty good path forward. Right. Get ready, buckle up, because domain two is a little bit weaker from your diagnostic assessment. That's correct. So... I didn't do as well on the diagnostic with domain two. <laughs> so which is next... surprising to me. I thought I would have done a lot better with assets, and I, but, I, but I didn't. Yeah, it's, just, it's one of those things, right? Because always, sometimes your real world experience doesn't always translate to the test world. Right. So next time we talk, we will keep going with your journey. We'll talk a little bit more about domain two, or at least conceptually how to wrestle with a domain that's a little bit harder to uh, to grasp. Excellent.